Hello and welcome to this very tall, four and a half inch by ten and a half inch tall scene. I'm doing this on a semi-gloss cardstock, and right here I'm applying a base coat of very light, warm, dye-based ink. Okay, just getting the foundation set here for um, the imagery to come. We're going with the nine inch tree trunk in an Art Foamy version. You can find these on the Art Foamy's website, not the Stampscapes website. And I thought I would really take make use of these really tall trees here, these really tall trunks, and do it in this slimline vertical format right here. And I thought it would make for a nice dramatic setting. Okay, blending in some dye-based inks on the Quaking Aspen Stampscape's rubber stamp here, not an art foamy. So we're combining the two different types of uh, stamps here. And what I wanted to do here is I wanted to have this aspen tree kind of peeking out from behind this, uh, what will represent a giant sequoia. Doesn't always have to be giant sequoias, even though it's a big tree trunk. If we put something, you know, very large next to it, then it would be a standard sized tree trunk. It would just be closer to us. But I wanted to kind of reflect a, a grandeur and majesty of, uh, you know, these larger forms here, taller forms. Okay, going in here with the Tiny Rocks small stamp. And I wanted to get some good texture in here, but I'm also using the texture stamp for some shading um, purposes. So I'm using the Walnut Stain Distress Ink here. It's a nice warm tone and uh, you know, kind of a mid-tone um, in terms of the, uh, the value of it. But I'm using it in its full strength, but I'm also repeating the impressions going for uh, progressively lighter impressions as I'm moving towards that lighter area. Um, and uh, so it's kind of a nice shading tool there. And we've created a little bit of a corridor of light going in with the same walnut stain color here to give myself a, a, a reasonably good foundation of tone to build what will be the tool that I'm using for most of my coloring, which will be colored pencils on this uh, scene. The semi-gloss cardstock's a pretty good Oh, kind of compromise in terms of um, surfaces. If you want a really super bright um, look to your coloring, um, you can go with dye-based inks on glossy cardstock. This isn't quite glossy, it's much closer to matte, but you get the, the benefit of having a, a really good impression quality, having a smoother paper, but you have the uh, the tooth of it to apply something like colored pencils. Okay, now up in that top area, I'm putting these little, oh, kind of a, a vignette of a little bit of a curtain of a darkness up top there, just to fill in that open space. All right, going in with the colored pencils. Okay, now this is what I've learned very quickly with colored pencils on this semi-gloss paper. It's not the ideal paper for colored pencils because it doesn't have very much of a tooth to it. The paper is smooth, but it's not so sealed off with a clear coat like a glossy cardstock to where it won't accept, um, you know, a reasonably soft colored pencil here. If you're working with super hard colored pencils, maybe it doesn't apply as much in terms of the layering that you can achieve. Okay, now when I was doing that, it occurred to me that I better stamp out my little hikers down there before I apply too much of the colored pencils because I don't want to have to stamp over the top of a wax surface. At least with my main subject matter, you'll see later on where I do stamp over the top of a lot of the waxy colored pencil applications with um, a stays on black ink. Okay, but right here, what I'm doing is I'm going in with my um, I went, already went in with my black colored pencil, now I'm going in with this reddish colored pencil. I usually work from lighter tones to darker tones, but I'm finding that with uh, the colored pencils, just because you can't layer, you know, uh, I don't know, five, six layers of colored pencil and have it apply onto this type of semi-gloss cardstock. So I applied uh, my shadows down first with the black colored pencil, and then I'm going into it with red 
because when I tried this the other day and I worked through kind of my beige tones up to the red, by the time I got to the red it would barely apply on there so I thought I would do that first and kind of come back into it with the lighter tones later. Filling out some of my um, shading work down below with some additional colored pencil making the shadows look richer in terms of um, Kind of the color saturations and brightness. Sometimes the brightest colors are in the shadow areas because they're not being washed out with a lot of um, bright light. So that's where you can really use um, a lot of your brighter tones. Okay, kind of working through a little bit of a warmer orange here now. So I've already gone with the black, the red, now I'm going in with the orange here. And I'm, I'm not applying a really thick coat. I don't, this is a sped up version, of course, but hopefully you can tell from this sped up version that I'm just kind of applying light tones with my colored pencils. I'm not pressing too hard with it at this point in time. Going in with this, oh, kind of orangish yellow right here. And again, brightening up my shadows. And then I'm going back with the black here. I thought, okay, before I get too far along, if I want to, you know, have my shadows a little bit darker, I better apply the black at this point in time. It's already getting pretty, you know, saturated with um, the uh, the black. Or with the colored pencils in general, so I'm hitting it with the black again. And then I'll go back in with some additional tones over the top of that. But see, kind of adding that uh, good, darker base tone right at the base of the uh, trees, it anchors the trees more firmly into the um, setting instead of having it look like they're kind of floating. You anchor objects down so it makes them look more opaque and it gives them visual weight. That being said, even the smallest uh, little details um, in terms of the people down there, I'm making them... Uh, kind of anchoring them into the scene with uh, a little bit of shading. Okay, the acrylic paint pens going in and making that aspen tree look a little bit more rounded and shimmery and dimensional by bringing in this opacity into it. It's really more translucent. You know, I lay these little yellow dots down and you can see the colors underneath them when it dries, but... Uh, you know, they're going to be a lot more opaque than, say, something like a transparent dye based ink. Adding some shadow underneath the uh, aspens. Going in and giving the aspens that kind of white, you know, ish trunk there. All right. All right, adding in my fences here. It's kind of giving um, a little bit of a reference, visual reference, as to the scale that these trees are supposed to represent here. You know, they're supposed to be really large. So adding that little fence in there, plus it kind of creates a, a nice visual lead-in into the scene. All right, finishing off the scene with some white pigment ink. I'm just going in where the lightest areas of the scene are and going into the objects next to them. Okay, so that we have the tree trunk on the left-hand side and then the aspen tree in the background there. And you can see I'm just kind of bringing in that light and airiness into the objects a little bit. You have to oscillate it. Don't put it over everything, otherwise you'll mute everything. Putting a little bit at the base of the figures there, but see that? It gives it a really soft light and a little bit more of a welcoming light. Um, kind of welcoming us as the viewers into the scene. And there you have it. A nice elongated, tall... Um, I don't know, whatever format to represent these giant sequoias here. Hope you enjoyed the scene. Thanks so much for watching.